Today we're going to replace the front and rear brake pads and rotors for this 2018 Macan GTS. So what I got here are two front rotors. They are front left and uh, front right. Uh, they are from Zimmerman, so it's a German company. It makes rotors. As you can see, the ventilations for the left are like this. And at the back side, there are some slots. Right side, the ventilations are facing the other side. And uh, both front rotors, I believe, are 360 millimeters in terms of diameter for this uh, GTS. And I think the thick thickness are marked on the side of the rotor. So I think there are 30. Let's see, 34 millimeters. Okay. And then those are the two uh, rear rotors. Uh, they're pretty much the same. So there's no left or right. And uh, the rear brake pads with sensors. It's a kit from ATE, which is owned by County. And uh, these rear ones, they are not uh, directional. And for front uh, brake pads, I chose the Techstar. Uh, two front brake pad water sensors and four giant brake pads. Came with these shims. Uh, so first thing we want to do is we want to jack up the car. I have these uh, quick jack so it's a little bit easier for the job. If you don't you can do one wheel at a time with a standard jack. Just make sure you put a jack stand underneath it to protect yourself. And I need a 12 volt external battery. And uh, this is the pump for powering the quick jack. So there's some kind of uh, automatic transmission fluid hose. And uh, in that pump, there's a reservoir. So once I start to connect to the battery, the pump will send hydraulic power through these hoses. And then the quick jack will rise up and then get the car up in the air. So the quick jack I have is rated to 5,000 pounds. And uh, make sure your car is under that uh, weight rating if you have them. Once I jack them up, there are some safety locks I can do. So I won't need any uh, hydraulic power after that. Now the car is up in the air. Next thing is take off your wheels. There is a one secure lock nut. Uh, you need to use the special tool that comes with the car. There is one on each wheel. So now all the wheels that I want to replace are off. For any brake job, I typically pop up the hood and also make sure the brake reservoir cap is open so I can see the level of the brake fluid. Make sure when I press the caliper uh, piston, the fluid is not going to um, overflow. Okay. Um, to the front brake. Uh, it's a big caliper, six pistons at the front. And uh, there are two clips right here. It uh, sometimes comes with the brake pads called the brake hardware. And there's one down there. So I think for these brakes, we have to take off this triple square uh, bolt over here. And here.
Make sure we have the correct rotor. Yep, we got it. Hammering didn't work for me, so I chose to just apply it against the knuckle and it come off easily. And I applied a little bit of anti-seize, make sure my rotor doesn't get stick on next time when I need to change it. Next thing is uh, for all the new brake rotors, I try to use brake cleaner to wipe off the factory oil or coatings on the surface. After we put the new rotor on, we put a little screw back in. This screw is just holding the rotor in place. Uh, later, when we put the lock nuts back in, it will tighten everything all together. Now we put the new pads in and uh, I use this kind of a uh, clamp to push the pistons back in together and one side is done we'll move to the other side and uh, remember to reconnect the brake wire sensor it's better to use the new one the brake pad sensor is facing towards the inside so make sure you clip on the right one and later we push it and then we're ready to put the caliber back in. Now we start to put the two bolts back in there to hold the caliper in place. And after that, we start to route the brake pad wire sensor, reconnect to the vehicle side. And then I started to drive those two triple square bolts back in. I did not put a torquing part on this side of the brake, I will do on the other side. Make sure to torque your bolts. Now we move to the driver's side. I used a brake breaker bar to break loose these two giant bolts. My wall just to uh, take the opportunity to lose the little rotor bolt while the brakes are still being held by the brake pads. Now it's a good time to disconnect the brake pad wire sensor.
this is why we're getting the brake pad we're warning because the wire is open again I'm using a hammer to pry it off make sure when you pry it off the feet are not underneath it otherwise it will be really painful Same thing on the other side. Gonna snap it in. I torque these two giant boats to about 270 newton meter, which is about 200 feet pound of torque. Make sure you do tighten them, otherwise you will lose your caliper and your direction while you are driving when you press your brake. One last step, reconnect the brake pad wear sensor and you are good to go. So after all the work and I drove out for braking in and now these are the new rotors and brake pads. So follow your manufacturer's instruction for braking in the new brake pads. Thanks for watching. Hope this video will help you to replace your brake as well. See you next time.